We are styling Roman Barbies. If you think that Barbies were invented in the 20th century, you are wrong. Yes, the dolls existed ever since the prehistory, but I'm not talking about just any kind of dolls. I'm talking about dolls that really, but really look like Barbies. I'm Jura and I have a PhD in archaeology and on this channel we are talking about the lifestyle in the past. So, come on Barbie, let's go party! Uh, 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 yeah. If you saw this doll, would you think that it was 2000 years old? No. These were the toys of wealthy Roman girls. They were made from ivory and they resembled upper-class adult Roman women. Other models could have been made from bone, cloth or ceramics and they could have varied in size and style. And all of them served to prepare the girls for their future roles of mothers and wives. But Let's focus on these prestigious toys. These dolls had an ideal body by Roman standards, small breasts and wide hips. Ideally, they would also have full lips, small nose and big almond eyes. Dolls also wore miniature rings, jewels and even removable clothing, mirroring the style of upper-class ladies. They emphasized that perfectly curated image of a wealthy woman, including elaborate hairstyles. Rich Roman ladies even had slave hairdressers who worked for hours straight, braiding, pinning their hair and even sewing in extensions. The most complicated and prestigious hairstyle that screamed I have money and nothing to do was the nest. As these dolls had movable limbs, they could have performed different activities like running, doing gymnastics or handling other objects. They were a sort of a model for the young girls, how they should aspire to look like from head to toe. These dolls were also part of a marriage ritual. On the eve before the wedding, a girl would put all childish things aside by dedicating her toys to the household gods. These dolls were usually found in graves of unmarried girls. And that is why they're so well preserved. And now let's style these Roman Barbies. First we have Barbie Sport. This ivory doll was found in the grave of Craperea Trifaina, a Roman 20-year-old girl that was probably soon to be married or was just married recently. Next to the doll there were also miniature toiletries like little mirrors and jewelry, gold bangles, small pearls, green pasta vitrea and gold spirals. The hairstyle of the doll resembled one of Faustina the Elder, wife of the 2nd century emperor Antonius Pius. Now let's style her. This might seem like a bikini, but this Barbie is not going to the beach. She's entering a competition. In ancient Rome, women competed in sports, mostly athletics, and they wore these bikini-like clothes you can see on this mosaic from Piazza Armerina in Sicily. Romans also used them like undergarments. The bottom part was subligaculum and the top was strophium. They were either from linen or leather, like these leather bikini bottoms from the well in London. And let's make the jewelry simple. Let's say she isn't married yet, so she'll be wearing this Lunula pendant, an amulet for Roman girls to protect them against demons, evil forces, magic and the evil eye. Now she's safe from the curses of her rivals. But let's make a modern version like this. Some athletic gear and she's ready for the Olympic Games. And now, wedding Barbie. This is another famous Roman Barbie found in a grave of a little girl and she has a hairstyle of Faustina the Younger, wife of a 2nd century emperor Marcus Aurelius. And we are putting this Barbie in a wedding dress. Let's start from hair. The hair was parted in six braids or locks and they were fastened by woolen bands. The hairstyle was topped by a crown of flowers, herbs and grasses that the bride picked herself. And then everything was covered by a yellow whale. 
She had a white tunic, simple tunica recta, made from a large rectangle folded in half and a hole for a hat. Then the sides were sewn to make sleeves. The tunic was tied with a belt, sometimes with elaborate Herculean knot, which is a Greek wedding knot. This was a chastity belt that the groom had to untie on their wedding night and it symbolized the tying of two people in marriage. She may have worn yellow shoes and of course jewelry. Let's keep it simple and put this wedding or engagement ring with clasped hands symbolizing the unification in marriage. And let's say this second or third century gold necklace with garnet clasp and emerald pendant found in Egypt. Here comes the bride, she's stunning, right? Now let's put this doll in a modern wedding dress. Doesn't she look like a perfect Capri bride? And now, luxury Barbie. Here we have another doll from the grave of Cosinia, an elderly Vestal virgin, a Roman priestess of the goddess Vesta. Judging by this helmet-like hairstyle, which could have been better, it is from the late 2nd or early 3rd century. The Barbie has a golden necklace and golden bangles on each arm and ankle, and she had a small amber box that may have contained the doll's clothes and accessories. And we'll dress her like a proper wealthy Roman matrona. First, she'll be wearing a simple tunic similar to the wedding one. Then over it we have to put a stola. That is a colorful long dress fastened at the top by fibulae or buttons and tied with a belt. Picture a sleeveless drapey dress. Over it in public respectable Roman ladies wore pala, a large rectangular shawl that was draped over the body covering the head as well. Only the married women wore stola and pala to show their modesty and class. We'll just keep her original jewelry as there is already too much going on here. And now she is ready to visit her rich friends. XOXO, Roman Barbie girl. And today she would wear a quiet luxury look for the dinner at Trastevere with her friends. Gossip and wine all the way. We are at the end of this video, so write down in comments which Barbie was your favorite. Thank you for watching this video and you know what to do. Like, subscribe, share, send to all and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!